guy was JFK's host that day. Uh, his son Bill was with him. Uh, Governor Guy, who was still alive, uh, was planning uh, to speak with you this morning, but unfortunately he has met with some health difficulties, um, and that's not possible. However, his son Bill sent us his father's uh, impressions of that historic day uh, for UND, and um, we're lucky that uh, we have it in writing, and we're also lucky uh, that we have uh, Wilbur Stolt, the director of the Chester Prince Library, here with us today to share uh, the impressions of Governor Guy of that historic day. So uh, let me introduce you for yourself. I'm honored to share the recollections of William Guy with you. I fear I cannot do them justice, but uh, we'll do the best I can. The words of William Guy, Governor of North Dakota. In September 1963, Colonel Ralph Wood superintendent of the North Dakota Highway Patrol, asked for an urgent meeting with me. He had been informed by the Secret Service that President Kennedy had selected the University of North Dakota as the site for an important speech. Approximately two weeks in advance of the President's arrival, the White House advance team arrived to finalize the details. Colonel Wood coordinated the effort on behalf of the University and the State of North Dakota. Then several days before the President's speech, I was called to a hastily arranged meeting at the University. When I arrived, the White House advance team and members of the North Dakota Task Force were standing in a huge, dark, and very empty UND field house. They were engaged in a heated argument. The White House representatives, backed up their, by their professional demographers, were adamant that the field house was unsatisfactory because, and I quote, the president will not make an important speech in a location with too many empty seats. Our demographers here tell us that you don't have the population numbers in eastern North Dakota and western Minnesota to fill this building. Well, our North Dakota task force was crushed. We didn't have time to change locations considering traffic, traffic, parking, seating, and security. Finally, the White House advance team realized there was no time and gave in. In their view, the President would just have to <coughs> accept vacant seats. That evening's edition of the Fargo Forum reported a crowd of 10,000, including an overflow of several thousand standing on the lawn outside the field house listening on suspended loudspeakers. Later, his recollections on the helicopter trip from Grand Forks Air Force Base to Grand Forks. Governor Guy recalls, as his helicopter passed over the farmland between the air base and the city, the president marveled at the level ground, commenting on its obvious productivity. Midway through the trip, the president asked whether the wheat growers in this region would object to selling grain to the Soviet Union. My response was that, I can't tell you what all of the farmers would think, but I'm sure the vast majority of them would be willing to sell grain to anyone who is hungry. On October 9, 1963, after President Kennedy's visit to UND, President Kennedy announced a sale of 4 million tons of wheat to the Soviet Union and 1 million tons each to Bulgaria, Hungary, Poland, and Czechoslovakia, all of whom were on the brink of starvation due to massive crop failures. Governor Guy recalls Pierre Salinger, who accompanied the President on his Western trip. Pierre Salinger was press secretary for President Kennedy. In preparation for their next stop after Grand Forks, which was Billings, Montana, Pierre Solinger had prepared a speech on 5 by 7 note cards for the President. On the helicopter ride to Grand Forks, Solinger had handed the cards over to the, the seat to the President. The President, being a speed reader, quickly fanned through the cards, and then he winked at me and told Solinger, Pierre, this will never do. Do it over. For a moment, Solinger was crestfallen, but then he realized the president was just kidding. A little later, uh, more recollections on Mr. Solinger's war experience. 
On the way back to the air base after the President's speech, I was sitting near the reporters who were traveling with the President. These reporters were discussing their World War II experiences. Most of those present were writers and historians who had been commissioned as officers after attending an officer candidate school at various training centers around the country. Eventually, Salinger spoke up saying, You guys really had it easy. When I did my officer training, it was at the end of the world. You could step off the edge and fall forever. The reporters asked Salinger, Oh, where was that, here? And the response was, Dickinson, North Dakota. <laughs> the words of Governor Guy.